Hello everyone. What we're going to do in this session is we're going to look at a similar problem that you had in the previous session, which is a fixed charge and facility location example. These questions are generally a combination of both the zero one where you're choosing something and also real or mixed integer values. So let's have a look at this question. As always, we'll begin by looking at the actual question so we can formulate the equations that we'll require to solve this problem. So Frio Lame Food Products owns farm in the Southwest and Midwest where they grow and harvest potatoes. It then ships these potatoes oh, <clears throat> to the three processing plants in Atlanta, Baton Rouge and Chicago, where different varieties of potato products, including chips, are produced. Recently, the company has experienced a growth in its product demand. So it wants to buy one or more new farms to produce more potato products. The company is considering six new farms with the following annual fixed costs and projected harvests. Here we have the fixed cost and projected harvest. The company currently has the following additional available production capacity and it's three plants that it wants to utilize. The shipping cost per ton from the farms being considered for purchase, the plant are as follows. The company wants to know which of the six farms it should produce to meet or it should purchase to meet available production capacity at the minimum total cost, including fixed annual fixed costs and shipping costs. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're looking at here. As we review the question, we see they own farms in the Midwest, South and Midwest, not very important, where they grow up and harvest potatoes. It then ships these potatoes to the three processing plants in Atlanta, Baton Rouge and Chicago. So here we know there are three processing plants where different varieties of potato chips are produced. Not important. The product doesn't matter. Recently, the company has experienced a growth in its product demand. So it wants to buy one or more farms to produce more potato products. The company is considering six new farms with the following annual fixed costs and projected harvest. So all of this is relevant information that we'll cover later. So the company is considering six new farms. That means we're going to have a zero one integer problem, or at least some 0, 1 integer decision variables, because we want to know yes or no. But the company has currently has the following additional production capacity, and it's three plants that it wants to utilize. A, 12, B, 10, C, 14, all relevant information. The shipping cost per ton from the farms being considered for purchase are as follows. Again, key. The company wants to know which of the six farms it should purchase at the minimum total cost, including annual cost and shipping cost. So here we have some key points. So the first thing we have to do, as always, is identify our decision variables. Oh, one second, everyone. Will I mute my phone? One, we have to see 
what our decision variables are. So let's look at the question. What are we choosing? Number one, we're choosing which of the six farms we should produce. So we have six decision variables. But in this situation, we also have shipping costs, as well, shipping and annual fixed costs. So our decision variable will be quite low because it's going to combine our shipping costs and our fixed costs. We have to choose what routes to ship and which, pro, uh, which farms to produce. That's a lot of decision variables. That's a lot of possible choices. So we have to reflect each of those choices in our objective function. Let's do that now. So we go down and we're going to do, as we know from above, it's a minimization. So min z, which is total cost, is equal to 18x1a plus, and 1a represents this shipping route from farm 1 to plant A. So we minimize just so it's clear. Plus, and then we continue. 15x1b. Plus, and again I'll continue minimizing but I'll stop talking about it because it's mostly just a visual. plus 13x2a plus, I'll minimize both of these, and this is going to continue on as we continue filling in the pattern, plus 10x2b. I'll minimize everything at the end so we can continue plus 17x2c plus 16x3a plus 14x3b plus 18x3c. 19x4a plus 15x4b plus 16x4c plus 17x5a plus 19x5b plus 12x5c plus 14x6a plus 16x We're almost there, plus 12x6c. So what we've done here is we've included in our decision variables each of the shipping routes. And the reason for that is because we, when we're computing our total cost, we have to consider how much it will cost to ship to each of these places. That's not an easy thing to do. We have to consider each possible shipping route from each of the six farms to each of the three locations, which will automatically give us a total of, as you can see, a total of 18 different possible routes. 
it does take us a while to input this manually. As we get better, we don't always have to input it manually, but for now, for simplicity's sake, we do. As if you follow the transportation example and we start using arrays, this becomes easier to enter. We don't necessarily have to write this giant objective because we're, we're able to deduce what the computer is asking for us as we get more comfortable with questions like this. But for now, we're going to stick to doing it this way. Okay. Now, once we've entered all of our different shipping routes, we have something else to consider. And that is also entering our individual fixed costs for each farm. So if we buy farm one, it's 405Y1. And we see that up here. $405 in fixed costs. So 405Y1 plus 390Y2 plus 450Y3 plus 368Y4 plus 520 Y5 plus 465 Y, <coughs> excuse me, everyone, Y6. <coughs> so what we've done now is now our objective function represents all of the shipping routes, <coughs> excuse me, all of the shipping routes plus each of our possible potential purchases and the fixed annual costs of running those purchases. So now we have a very good idea of what we are choosing between. Remember, decision variables are what we are choosing between. So which of these routes are we choosing between? And which of these farms are we going to buy? As always, once we have our minimization or maximization objective function, then we can move to the next level and enter our constraints. In this situation, we're going to have nine total constraints. You'll see why shortly, but for now, let me just enter them. Now, what a constraint is, as we know, is a constraint is what limits our decision-making process. Now, to limit our decision-making process in this situation, we're going to look at several things. The first one is the projected annual harvest. And what we mean here is if we look at X1A, we have anything shipped from farm one must be farm one is eight or farm X1A plus X1B plus X1C minus 11.2 must be less than or equal to zero. So let's type that in and then we'll talk about it. So our first constraint is X1A, which is the goods shipped from fat farm one to plant A, plus X1B, which is the goods shipped from plant one to farm, B, or from farm one to plant B, plus X1C, 
is less or minus 11.2y is less than or equal to 0. Now, what does that mean? What is shipped from farm 1 to A to B to C must equal 11.2. However, that doesn't work down here, so we can change it. We take 11.2 from this side, and we move it to this side. And that simply means everything shipped from farm 1 must be less than or equal to 11.2. We've simply rearranged the equation. So in this situation, in this scenario, we're seeing that we're limiting the goods shipped from farm one to up here, what is available to be shipped from farm one. Then we continue with the same pattern. So we say x to a plus x to b plus x to c minus 10.5 must be less than or equal to 0. And again, the 10.5 comes from right here. We continue. And I'm going to do all six of them right now, so please be patient while I type. equation, our third farm, fourth one. Finally, C6. Must be less than or equal to zero. So what each of these six constraints has represented is that the total amount, and if we bring it up here, the total amount must be less than or equal to what the harvest actually is. I won't do it, this is not necessary, but if we look at it a different way, maybe it's easier to see. So X1A plus X1B plus X1C, is less than or equal to 11.2. These right here are the same equation. They mean exactly the same thing. All we've done is rearrange to make it a little more, a little easier for the computer to work through it. So in this situation, these two equations are identical. And what they mean is the goods shipped from the first farm to processing plant A, the first farm to processing plant B, and the first farm from processing plant C must be less than or equal to 11.2. We've simply rearranged the equation. So I'll highlight that, but I'll, I'll, I'll bring the first equation back to black.
so that it fits in with the others. Now we've done, we've covered these limitations, meaning this is what they can produce. That's a limitation. If what they can produce doesn't meet our needs, then it doesn't work for us. And that's what we've shown here. Now, there's one more thing we have to look at. If you had to guess, I'm hoping you would say capacity because that hasn't been accounted for yet. Capacity is how much they can produce and what they produce also has to be accounted for. So how do we show that? We come down here and we show that X 1A plus X 2A plus X 3A plus X 4A plus X 5A plus X 6A must be equal to 12. And what that means, 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, all the things shipped from each of the six farms going to A can only equal 12 because they can only process 12. If it's more than 12, it's waste anyways. They can't process any more than that. So what we're indicating here is no matter what else happens, they can only process 12. We can only send 12 to them. We're going to repeat the second pattern, but we see here that plant B can only process 10. So in this situation, it's going to be X2A, uh, X1B plus X2B plus X3B plus X4B plus X5B plus X6B must be equal, as we saw up here, to 10. That's as much as it can handle. And there's one more section down here. X, oh, X, one, C plus X, two, C plus X, three, C plus X, four, C plus X, five, C plus X, six, C must be equal to 14. That's what we've seen here. So what we've accounted for is in our constraints, we know how much we can possibly ship because we know how much each farm can produce. We were shown that here. We also know how much each plant can handle. These two ideas, how much each farm can produce, and how much each plant can, can, uh, can process directly affect our problem solving. It's not the money, it's not necessarily the fixed cost because we're not operating in a vacuum. Instead, we know that there are things governing our choices and that's what we've shown here. So in the next section, we're gonna use these equations to solve the problem. Thank you for listening to the first section. I'll talk to you all of you in one moment. Hello everyone. In this section, we're going to solve the problem we talked about a, moment, a little while ago. Now, I'm doing QM for Windows again. The reason is, it's still a little bit easier. And more importantly, and this is very important, more importantly, it's not necessarily the correct answer that's important. It's understanding the concepts when we outline the question. And we did that already. So what I'd like to focus on here is solving the problem as simply as possible because our issue was in the previous section, 
the biggest issue was determining exactly what the computer was looking for, exactly what the computer was asking. So we're going to solve this problem using QM. We're going to talk about the results. And just like we solved the last problem with QM, the key focus is once you find the equations, this does become significantly easier. So let's continue. First thing we do, module, integer, and mixed integer program. Open a new file. Let's call it the free home chip problem. Now, how many constraints did we have? We had not one, not two, but three, but nine different constraints. We can see them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we click nine constraints. As you can see, these problems are getting more and more complex as we move along. So let's continue. And we come up here. We see we have oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. We have how many decision variables? Twenty-four different decision variables. As we can see, these questions will get very intense as time goes on. So we're trying to minimize because we're trying to minimize cost. And we'll take our all the way up to 24. And what this shows us now is that we're ready to begin the problem because we've highlighted the key information. So click OK. You can see already, this is getting complicated, especially when we start highlighting. Oh, I reversed that. Let's let's go back. Let's uh, let's open a new file because I made a mistake. So the Frito con the Frito question constraints is twenty four. Uh, constraints is 9, and decision variables is 24. That was the mistake that I made. So we're again trying to minimize. We click OK. Now you can see as we continue, we're getting more and more complex, and that's what we're seeing here. There are a lot of things we have to deal with as we move closer and closer to real life. And this problem still is relatively simple. If it was a difficult one, who knows how many variables, how many constraints we would have to deal with. So the big thing is be comfortable with the theory, and then the theory will allow you to work up. So our first decision variable is 1, 2, A. Our second decision variable is 1, 2, B, 1, C, 1, 2, 2, A, 2, 2, B, 2, 2, C. Continue on. 3, 2, A. This is monotonous, and this is where we're starting to see that Excel might be easier to use 
as we get into these massive, massive numbers. So let's continue. 5b, 5c, 6a, 6b, 6c. So we've put in all of the relevant information so far. We've entered our decision variable, shipping route decision variables. Now we also have six yes or no, zero, one variable questions. We have to include those as well. So the first one is farm one, farm two, farm three, Okay, so we have all of, oh, what, I made a mistake somewhere. A, B, C, 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 A, B, C. What, where, did my, where was my mistake? So that is 18. That was 19, 20, 21, 22. Ah, farm five and farm six, my mistake. We have farm five and farm six here. That's what we've seen so far. Now, as we move to the next step, let's consider renaming our constraints. But I guess first we could enter our key information here. And we find this from the chart up here. We have 18, 15, 12, 13, 10, 17, 16, 14, 18. 19, 15, 16, 17, 19, 12, 3 more, 14, 16. So we've entered all of our decision variable numbers except for the farms. For that, we have to go up here and look at their fixed cost. The first one. 405. 405. No. Okay, so the second one. Why does this keep happening? Okay, the second one. We have farm two here. Farm two is 390, 450, 368, 520, and 465. So we've now completed our decision variables. Because we had 24 decision variables, it was not a quick process. There should have been an easier way, and we will look at one when we use Windows, uh, Excel next week. But for now, it's important just to realize that QM with large numbers, because it doesn't allow arrays, can become more difficult. So let's do, let's continue. Constraint number one is very simply capacity or annual harvest Farm one annual harvest farm two annual harvest farm three annual harvest farm up farm. 
before. And we'll harvest. Almost there, everyone. Farm five and one more annual harvest. Farm six. These represent our six first constraints. We can do them now or we can do them after. Let's finish uh, naming our constraints before we keep begin the problem. So our next set of constraints represents how much capacity we have. So capacity is A. Capacity B. Capacity C. So here we go. We go up. Now we've entered all of our key information here, but we have a little more to look at. So the first one is we have to go down to our constraints. We've entered our objective function. So constraint number one is A, B, C, minus 10.5 is greater than or equal to zero. Oh, one second. Now what we've got here, we made it greater than or equal to zero because that's important in Excel. But over here it's not. So what we'll do is we'll very simply reverse this sign because we want it to be greater than or uh, less than or equal to. And the answer is 11.2. We repeat again for the next one. Come all the way back. Here we go. One, 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 up. One, one, one. All the way back. Change our sign. And again, we make it the value that we have, which is 10.5. Continuing on. And as you can see here, when you're labeling everything, because it's necessary in QM, when you're labeling everything, even it can get boring. It can become monotonous. Okay, so again, we change our sign. We make this 12.8. Three more to go. Again, change our sign. The next value is 9.3. Just two left. Ten point eight. The last one. Quite simply, 9.6. So what we've done is we've shown that for each of these, it has to be less than those numbers, less than or equal to, because we cannot ship more than those numbers. That's very, quite simply, the amount that each farm will produce. We cannot ship more than exists. So we've got three variables left to go. Three variables for each of them. P is, it's an equal sign, and it's the total amount, essentially what we're looking for is the total amount of capacity that they can fulfill. So anything more than that doesn't work, anything less than that isn't as efficient. So we'll change all three signs now, and then we come over here, and we make it very simply 12 tons. 10 tons, 14 tons. That's what we've done. Now, over here, we have to indicate which ones it is. So it's X1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A. And what that shows is from each of the farms. That's all that can be demanded. 
we do it again here, B, 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 and B. Finally, the last one with the C's, C, 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 and C. What this is indicated is if the number one is there, it means this represents that part. So we're almost finished, but we're missing one key step. Oh, we made a small mistake here, because we know it has to equal. And we've made one small mistake, and that involves choosing if each variable is 0, 1, integer, etc. Now we know these ones are choices, so they become integers. I'm uh, sorry. They become 0, 1. All six of them represent choices. Which farm should we sell? That's why it's always going to be a 0, 1 situation. Okay, we, what we've indicated here is that all six of these, what is key is that they are choices. On the other side, we don't have to worry about that. We just want them to be integer values because they're representing what is happening. So then finally we come over here to the end. Everything's been accounted for. All we do now is we solve our problem. Oh, one second, everyone. I didn't anticipate this. Wait, please. Okay, one thing that happened, and one of the weaknesses of QM, is that it didn't complete all of the iterations because we've given it so many variables, it's going to take time. So I'm going to hit solve again, and let's see what happens. What we've shown here is that different things. Now we made them integer values because we're rounding down. So let's look at what these numbers represent. One C is a value of 11, meaning we're going to ship 11 tons from one C. One two B is 10 tons, three tons, etc. These show us what we, oh, What I did was I readjusted the numbers so that in this situation they're real instead of integer. Real just means we can do percentages. It was my mistake for putting it as integer because I didn't realize, I, I wasn't thinking and quite simply, I didn't realize that of course you can ship less than full tons. This answer we see here is a good indication of how to solve a problem like this because these numbers represent what will be shipped from each different situation. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. And I'll see you next week, where we'll do one more problem like this before we move on. Thank you again.